Welcome back to the channel, it's Andy, we're back with FM23 and IFK Jutteberg and today we wrap up the Europa League league phase with our last two games. First up we are away against Benfica, an extremely difficult game and then we are at home against Hoffenheim in our final game but so far things have been going pretty well and I think we're almost certainly going to get through to the knockout playoff round uh, so we will still be in Europe for the next round. But we're going to do the final two games now and see uh, just where we end up finishing in this uh, league. Last time we wrapped up the 2025 Osvenskan League season. Unfortunately, we didn't retain the title. It went to Malmö as we uh, dropped too many points, too many draws throughout the season. Uh, so we'll go again in 2026 and try and win that title back. But today, Europa League is the focus. As always, if you're enjoying the videos, drop a like, leave comments and subscribe if you haven't or if you're new. Check out the second channel down below. We're playing Horizon Forbidden West, but let's jump into FM. So last episode, we wrapped up the Swedish season. As I mentioned, we drew 2-2 against Halmstads. Uh, we went 1-0 up and 2 one up but then Hoyland got two goals for them to deny us uh, the three points and that meant that we handed Malmo the title uh, with a game to spare. We did beat Vernon by three goals to nil in our final game meanwhile uh, Malmo actually lost 5-3 so we drew seven games this season. If we'd have won one of those seven games we would have retained the title on goal difference and that's the margin that it was at. It was just one too many draws. There you can see Malmo are the champions with 72 points. We finished on 70, Hammerby on 69, Your Gardens on 61. So we won't be in Champions League qualifying next season, unfortunately, but we will go straight into the Europa League. I'm not sure what point we'll join at, but we'll have that um, sort of when we get to the summer. We played three Europa League games off camera. First up was Slovan Bratislava away from home. Kulokov put in a rebound inside three minutes to make it 1-0. An equaliser came from the Slovaks after just 10 minutes. Chavaric got the ball and slid it in the near post and it was 1-1. And then they took a lead in the 22nd minute. Um, a deflected cross came to Huramada and it was Barsagayan with the deflected shot. I don't know what Dahlberg's doing there. It's just an absolute disgrace. It's 2-1. We did equalise ourselves just a couple of minutes later. Elias Hagen with the ball over the top. Abdullahi, good first touch and beats the keeper and it's 2-2. But then Bratislava took a 3-2 lead with five minutes to go in the first half. Medvedev with the ball. Dahlberg can't keep it out. It's 3-2 to the Slovaks. And then remarkably, with two minutes to go in the first half, we scored again and we made it 3-3 before half-time. Andrejka with the ball in there and Elias Hagen slots it home. 3-3 before half-time. But the home side scored once again in the 70th minute. Uh, terrible defending from the back and Saponjic couldn't get it either. Chavrich has a free go from like six yards out and it's 4-3. And we did equalise in stoppage time to make it 4-4. Kulikov's header off the post and Emma Markovic the first player to react. And we did equalise late on in the game. But a 4-4 draw against Slovan Bratislava. We then hosted the Ukrainians Dnipro and they took a lead in the 13th minute. Nelson Monte with the header from a set piece. So Dnipro lid 1-0 away from home. We had to wait until the 50th minute for us to equalise and save a point at home against the Ukrainians. Elias Hagen with the ball to Andrejka and Monte could not get it away. Kulikov there. It was 1-1 the final score. Next game was much more comfortable where we hosted Heracles of the Netherlands and took a 1-0 lead in the 27th minute. Kulikov with yet another goal. We doubled our lead in the 45th minute right at the end of the first half. Uh, header away, uh, fell to Kuzu and Olivieri was onside and just put the ball in the net. The Dutch did get a goal back in the 69th minute. Seerhuis with the ball and beating Pontus Dahlberg who again had another questionable performance in goal. We did get a third goal in the 94th minute. Ruben Loftus-Cheek playing a part as well. The ball fell through to Andrejka and he beats the goalkeeper to restore our two-goal cushion. 3-1 win at home. Um, good to get three points after a couple of draws. So disappointing to drop points against Bratislava and Dnipro, but that does mean with six games played in our Europa League league, we actually haven't lost yet. We're unbeaten and we're actually not far from that top eight, although we do have Benfica and Hoffenheim in our last two games. So there is a chance we could qualify for the round of 16 but we'd need some massive results in transfer news the window's not open yet but you can see here we've got got about 15 players that are going to be joining us uh when the window opens on the 1st of february i'll go through these next episode because we've got two games to get through today but these are the players we brought in and we'll go through them in more detail in the next video uh, but let's jump into the europa league games the first up is benfica away from home going to be an extremely tough game we could go defensive but i kind of want to just keep playing the way we play 
maybe drop back the shape a little bit. In injury news, Olivier is out with an ankle injury, which he suffered in a friendly. Ziad Larkish is also out with a thigh injury, and Sebastian Olsen is out with a hip injury. Uh, because the season is at an end, unfortunately, Andre has gone back to Inter Milan after his loan finished, and they don't want to reloan him to us, so we are without Andre maybe for good. Last season, this kind of happened the same thing, and then eventually, when it got to the end of the window, we did actually get him back in on loan. But um, yeah, Andre is not here anymore. So this is the side that's going to play. Kulikov and Abdullahi will play up top. Markovic and Berg on the wings. Hagen and Kuzu in the midfield. Trons and Bungsbo, Nissen and Hausner in defence. Now, Frederick Nissen, uh, we have signed him on yet another contract. Uh, but the key thing here is we have gotten rid of the release clause. There is no longer a release clause in there. Uh, and yeah, that's a good thing because that release clause was at £1.9 million. And after that, we actually got a couple of bids in there. AC Milan and Juventus both bid for Nissen. It wasn't as much as the release clause, but it was about a million pounds. We rejected it, and Nissen showed signs of maybe being unsettled, but when he said, we're not selling you, he just accepted it. So it looks like Nissen might be here to stay, for now at least. I still think we're going to lose him at some point, and there's still interest from Milan and Juventus, so they might come back in. But for now, Nis is happy to stay. Looking at the uh, Benfica side, some names that yeah, you'll definitely recognise, like Sheldarup, uh, Danny Ceballos, Juan Mario. And so far, we're unbeaten in this league phase, which is really, really good going. I'm sure you'll want to hear the Champions League, uh, the Europa League theme. But, um, we'll probably play it for the uh, for the second game, unless for whatever reason it's still playing at the moment. Is Kulikov going to score here? There's no. <laughs> we're not. We're 15 seconds into the game that's got to be a record for the for european football surely it's, it's going to count we're literally 15 seconds into the game the, if, if the europe league thing was playing it probably still is kulikov has scored literally the ball is in the net in 13 seconds that has got to be a record i mean that's as good a start as you can hope for against benfica but now we're going to have to keep the ball out and i'm sure benfica will try and get forward and that shot goes well over the bar from gets and fernandez I am imagining that Benfica will have a lot of possession today. I'm actually going to drop it back to Cautious. I'm going to drop off more with that defensive line. We're going to regroup and hold shape. We're already defending this lead and we're 10 minutes in. Uh, I'm just going to drop the tempo as well here. Just try and try and sort of drop back a bit. Try and hit them on the counter-attack. We're actually edging possession, surprisingly. But yeah, we're just going to try and take it easy here and try and defend this lead. I'm sure Benfica will get chances for themselves. Moose is here and here's Danny Ceballos to uh, Gilberto on the right-hand side here. I think he's coming up as a, as a wing-back. And uh, there was a good three shirts in there. And the ball has gone in the net. Gedson Fernandez scores in the 15th minute. And it was a matter of time before they were going to score, wasn't it? I mean, our, our, our lead lasted a good 13, 14 minutes. But Joao Mario with the assist. And yeah, I mean, we got we didn't get outnumbered at the back there, but the, the defenders didn't do They didn't do great, did they? Maybe we do go a bit more positive. I'm going to go up to balanced. And see what happens. Sheldrop's got a free kick here. 27 minutes in the match. That's not going to bother the goalkeeper. Thankfully. Dahlberg's going to keep his place. Uh, I was looking for a replacement goalkeeper for him. Um, but I wanted a homegrown one. And I didn't really want to pay uh, what the team's asked for. So Dahlberg's going to keep his place. Yeah, I think he's got about a year left on his contract. So I think we're going to keep him. Because I think no matter what goalkeeper you bring in. There's going to be mistakes. I really don't think it matters how good your goalkeeper is. Um, I imagine there's still going to be things that go wrong. We're going to get a goal here. Melvin Berg. Oh, it's 2-1. Melvin Berg has scored. He has been a fantastic player, Melvin Berg. He's been absolutely brilliant. I'm at, like, He won player and young player of the season in 2025. He's just been doing so, so well in this team. And he's got the goal here to give us a 2-1 lead against Benfica in Portugal. How mad is that? Let's try and take this into half-time. That would be really, really good. We've kept, we've, we've stood our ground. We had that big chance early in the match, literally seconds into the game. Haven't offered much since then, but we do lead. I'm going to go for a calm down shout. Because we're leading here. We're going to try and hold on to it. If we get through this Europa League phase without losing, I would be absolutely shocked. Absolutely shocked. We managed to get a draw against Napoli. And we were 2-0 up and we equalised to make it 2-2, which was a crazy result. But to win in Portugal with Benfica would just be that little bit more special. But they're passing the ball around here quickly here. But, oh, the striker doesn't quite get... Wait, where was there a penalty in there? 
What? Uh, right. Um, I want to see what this decision is. Where was there a penalty in there? What am I? What am I looking for here? Because I can't. What happened here? Shoulder ups on the ball. Where was there a foul in there? I really. Right. I want to slow this right down. Because I, I don't know what I'm looking for here. Maybe you've seen it, but I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm slowing this right down. I don't know what I'm looking for here. Shoulder up's got the ball. Where Where is there a foul here? I, I've no idea. I, there's no contact. I've got no idea. It's saying that Bungsbo tripped Musa. So there's Bungsbo. Where's Musa? Musa's there. No, there's no contact there. And then shoulder up's got the ball. Bungsbo's nowhere near Mo Musa. And then he blows for VAR. So I don't know what he's seen. Well, Jamario stepped up to take the penalty. He scored it. I don't know what he's seen there. I've no idea. Here's Yoga Leite to Ceballos. And Kuzu trying to win the ball there off of Gedson Fernandez, but doesn't quite. Kuzu goes in there and it's fallen to Gedson Fernandez and he's fired it in. And now Benfica lead 3 2. And this first first bit of this second half has just completely gotten away from us. We haven't offered much in this game, but we've done enough for us to be 2-1 up. Now Benfica are 3-2 up. And they look like they're going to be hungry for more as well. Tronson, Tronson can't even win the ball there. Tronson's having a really, really poor game. And we can't even clear the ball. And it's 4-2. I don't even know what to say about this. The first 15 minutes of this second half. It's been an absolute nightmare for us. I mean, this second half, we've offered nothing. I think we've had one shot at goal. But for us to be punished like that, those three goals in like 15 minutes of the second half, I don't even feel like that's our fault. One of those was a penalty for nothing that I can see. It might be time late on, though. Last 10 minutes of the game, we did have a set piece, but it's been cleared away. And here is Neres and Benfica. Look how many men they've got forward here. And Alsnes has got all of the right channel all to himself. And... <laughs> Dolberg can't even keep that out and it's 5-2. This second half has just been an absolute disaster. If I was given the goal, it's 5-2. That's incredibly harsh on us. Like, from the moment that penalty got given, it's just been... Oh, Dolberg's had a miserable time there as well. From the moment that penalty was given, this second half, this second half has just been one thing after another. And I don't even feel like it's their fault. Hagen's lost the ball in midfield. Neres, Alsnes is forward. And that's definitely 6-2. I, I really feel bad for them because this is not their fault. We haven't been playing that badly today, but Benfica have just flipped the switch and the officials are against us, so there's nothing we can do. 6-2 final score. I think that's incredibly harsh on us. Five second-half goals for Benfica, the first of which a penalty for no reason that I can see. And then from there, Benfica just took advantage and just absolutely destroyed us. I think that's incredibly harsh on us. We didn't offer anything at all, really, after the first goal. I mean, we got the sec we got the lead with like a few minutes left of the first half, but the second half, we didn't do anything. So, unfortunately, that does mean that our chances of finishing in the top eight are effectively done. Um, we would need an absolute miracle if we were to get through. We'd need to beat Hoffenheim and all seven teams above us would need to uh, drop points so it's not likely well Kulikov's 13 second goal is the fastest for us uh, but it's not the fastest goal Florian Wurz for Bayer Leverkusen scored in nine seconds against Sturmgraz can we see that no we can't see it but yeah Florian Wurz scored in nine seconds so we didn't even break the record of 13 seconds we're going to be missing another striker for the Hoffenheim game. Abdullahi's out for five to ten days. That leaves us with just Kulikov. We might have to play a single striker next game. Uh, Kalia Hansen's out with a cold. I will send him home and we'll play with Nissen and Bungsbo. Okay, last Europa League league game. We're at home against Hoffenheim. I feel like we could get a result here. It's going to be very, very tough. Hopefully we don't get completely walloped again. Okay, so we are going to play with just the one striker because Abdullahi's out and Olivier is out. So it's going to be just the one striker. Carlin is going to play as an anchorman behind Hagen and Kuzu. So we are going to be a bit more defensive um, and just try and get that extra man behind the ball. Here we go. I did promise it to you. I wasn't sure if we are going to get in the first game or not, but the Europa League theme, uh, we are going to at least be 
in the knockout playoff round so we will have at least one more tie and then we'll see where we go from there uh, we were playing against Hoffenheim at home the music's still going as well when we started the match we've had a shot we now have three shots at goal an 87th minute of the match there's, there's a chance for us to get a smash and grab here Holm looking for the ball there but he doesn't get it Lars Hagen looking to get it back but he doesn't here's Hanny Mukhtar here is John coming up from the left Hausner Oh, he did well for a second there, but he lost the battle in the end. Here's Baumgartner. And Nissen. Oh, my God. Dolberg. He's done it again. He's done it again. It's, oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> so frustrating. Let's see this again. Baumgartner with the ball. And, you know, he wasn't going to go for goal from there. Dolberg's made the stop. It probably would have hit the side netting. And Mukhtar's got an open net. And they're going to lose the game because of that. I mean, we've offered nothing going forward. But that's a frustrating goal to concede. And Kudakov has... Has he touched the ball in this game? I'd be actually interested to see how many times he's touched the ball. Because he's on a 5.9. And he's just had nothing from this game. And we've still got injury time to go. And there might be a second goal here from Hoffenheim. And nothing's going our way. Oh, it's... Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Hack. He's hacking the game. How does that go in? And yes, we've done nothing going forward there. And you know what? Hoffenheim's got a 2.87 XG. So I'm amazed that it took him that long to score. But our last two games of the Europa League end in defeat. One of which was a lot heavier than the other. Kulikov gets a 5.8. 5.8. Uh, so our final position is 17th place. So unfortunately, that does mean that we are in the lower bracket for the knockout playoff round. Which is going to give us a tougher tie, unfortunately, in theory, anyway. I think the options will be Tottenham, Roma, Servettes, which they've done well to get as high as they did, but that's a game we could win. Sporting, I don't know if we can get Hoffenheim because we played them already. Uh, Villarreal, we want to avoid because they are one of the top seeds here. Uh, Mainz and Oziek of Croatia. So there's some sides there which I feel like we, we could get the result if we play well, but we need to play well. Sides like Spurs and Villarreal and Roma, obviously, we want to avoid because I think we'll just get blitzed. But Servet, I feel like we can beat them, although they seem to have done pretty well. Five wins in their eight, um, but the wins are, are games against, I think you'd expect them to win those games. Like AEK, Victoria, Oziek, Heraklis, Kivada. I would expect them to win those games. We drop points against Dnipro and Slava and Bratislava. That's the difference there. We should have beaten those sides. I think that draw is coming up in the next couple of days. So we'll try and get it done before the video ends. But look at how many players are joining our club on the 1st of February. It's an absolutely ridiculous amount of players. Philip Berggren, obviously not a fan of us. IFK Göteborg are mid, he says. Molly Brunstrom says no shenanigans here. They must have watched the Benfica match. We'll see what happens. Let's go. Let's see the draw and let's see who we are against. So Dnipro, the first side out of the hat and they get Villarreal. We've avoided a big side there. Mulder, the next team out. And Mulder face Roma. It's another big side that we've avoided. Partizan and Belgrade are next. I think we are at home for the first leg. I think that's guaranteed. I think that's why it says that we are sweet, uh, seeded, not Swedish. We're Swedish, but we're, we're not seeded. It's Oziek. Okay, I'm not happy. I'm not unhappy about that at all. Oziek is a side that I'm pretty certain we can beat as long as we play well. Slovan Bratislava get Hoffenheim. Kizvar to get Serva. That's a good side for them as well to get the Hungarians. Uh, Spurs still yet to be drawn. There they are. They get AK Athens. Uh, so that means that Andelect gets Sporting. That's a big tie. Sporting Andelect is huge. Of those sides, that's probably one of the better case scenarios we could have got. Oziek can serve it with the two sides that I felt that we were had a good chance against. So Oziek, I would absolutely take. And first leg at home, if we win that game, I think we're looking good. So we'll do those two games next episode, both legs against Aussie, and we'll have a look at the multitude of signings that we've just made in the new transfer window as well. A good 15 players I think we've brought in. A mixture of like players that could maybe step into the team now and youngsters for the future, which will hopefully um, go build themselves into something big. But we'll wait and see. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on the video, leave comments, subscribe if you haven't or if you're new, turn notifications on, check out the second channel down below. Uh, two defeats today, which is not something that usually happens on these in the, in the save, but 
against Benfica in Hoffenheim, I think you probably expect that. But 6-2 was extremely harsh. And that penalty, again, I've no idea what happened there. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but yes, we are through to the knockout playoff round in the next episode. Oziek, the Croatians. And I think if we play well, we've got a chance of getting through to the round of 16. So fingers crossed that happens. But that is going to do it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.